hello, I'm Shelby. Shel Shelby. No, 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 no. Hi, hello, I'm Schleb, and today I really want to talk to you about Voice of Cards, The Isle of the Dragon Roars. I will mostly be calling it Voice of Cards for the majority of the video just because it's shorter to say. Remembering to say The Isle of the Dragon Roars for some reason doesn't really work out in my brain. So, Voice of Cards it is. <laughs> Voice of Cards is Yoko Taro's newest IP. If you do not know who this man is, uh, let me let me give you a little inside look. <laughs> when asked to share a bit about Voice of Cards, he had this to say: "Hello, I'm Yoko Taro, the producer of Voice of Cards." That's a lie. Creative director is my real job title. The job of creative director is to have the younger members create lots of different things and then say things like, that's pretty good, isn't it? While sitting back on a cushy sofa. But recently, I don't get a chance to sit on that sofa. It's all because of this work. Work is loathsome. Work is loathsome. Work is loathsome. And he goes on to explain a little behind the scenes and... <laughs> It's, it's overall really funny. You should just read it for yourself. On the PlayStation blog website, you are able to read all of this. So I'll have any links and whatnot in the description below. Because honestly, I would just check out this uh, blog as it's very informative, but stay here first. <laughs> Yoko Taro is the game director and scenario writer for two really popular series for Drakengard and for Nier as well as Nier Automata. This should also explain why the DLC is the way that it is, but we'll get to that in a minute. Voice of Cards was announced, I think, properly at the Nintendo Direct uh, on September, was it 27th? I don't remember when it was actually, when the Direct was, but at that Direct, this game had its first public trailer, I think, but when I looked at the Twitter, they had already made tweets like, at the beginning of the month so i don't know if like western fans are behind or if they announced this elsewhere or what but i had no idea about this game until the nintendo direct i don't normally record my reactions for directs and things like that but when i was watching i immediately knew when the song started playing and seeing the character designs that it was a square enix title and then ba bada bing bada boom i saw yoko Taro's name and i said that that explains it Yes. I don't know, like once you're a fan for something for so long, you just you just kind of know after a while. <laughs> after seeing the trailer, I was very excited to check out the demo. I unfortunately was able to play it until a few days later, but I have since played it and I really want to tell you about it and why you really should check it out. And I should say here, I'm not sponsored. So yeah, no stress. Like, no, don't, don't, don't feel it. Don't, I'm not selling you anything. I'm just telling you there's a free demo that you should just, just simply check out, all right? <laughs> if you are super into D&D, &D, any tabletop RPGs, or even uh, TCG, like Pokemon or Magic, or even Final Fantasy TCG, uh, I cannot recommend this demo or this game for you enough. Voice of Cards is a tabletop RPG, but in a video game. Everything that you encounter in the game is... A card. <laughs> when you open up the demo and start the game, you enter a dark room, you see the cards, and the game master introduces himself as the game master. Which, little fun little tidbit, in English, the game master's voice is done by Todd Haberkorn. So if you're a big anime fan, big big voice actor fan, then you probably recognize the name. The GM does all of the voice acting in the game. Your characters, uh, no matter who they are, what they look like, they're all voiced by your game master. Very much so, like in D&D. When your DM simply just voices all the NPCs that you meet along the way. Oh, this is so cool. This is like, like I, okay. So I just started playing D and D and I don't want to be like, oh my gosh, this game is like D and D. However, <laughs> I'm getting such like, like tabletop RPG vibes. And I, I'm pretty sure that's how actually how they describe this game too. So I'm just, ah! <laughs> despite the GM doing all of the voice acting, the music to the sound effects that everything has is absolutely perfect and does not take away from the fact that there's essentially only one voice actor. Everything from the music playing in the background to the cards flipping to the piece moving around, everything sounds perfect. It sounds as if you were there playing a game with the GM. Also, let's not forget to mention that the opening song sounds like it's straight out of a near game. Therefore, it sounds absolutely amazing. <laughs> so right away, it already feels like a D&D or a tabletop RPG game. Right away, from the get-go. 
I have just started my first D&D session with my mods from Twitch and I've been having so much fun. I think that's kind of why I'm really excited and super just, I can't stop talking about this game. I'm very annoying to my friends about it right now. I'm so sorry. Sorry to Alex as well. <laughs> hey, you want to play voice of cards? In a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so when playing this card game, so the, the game within the game, <laughs> it feels really weird saying that. I don't know. So when playing this card game, you play as three members of the Ivory Order. Winifred, a mage, Berwin, a soldier, or a tank? He, he looks more tanky to me, but I guess you can call him just a soldier. Uh, and Hedwin, a sage. Huskley names himself Berwin. Oh, <laughs> that is so close to my D&D character's name. Alex. There's a character. His name is Berwin. It's spelled exactly like Bruin, except the E and the R switched. <laughs> you start in the castle advent in which you meet the queen and some of her guards. She requests that the three members go out and search for the stolen royal treasure, in which turns out to be a vial of liquid or medicine. It's not really explained exactly what it is, but you know kind of what it looks like. You leave the castle to go to the nearest town of Nexton to find clues on where this vial could be. Before reaching Nexon, you engage in your first battle, in which the GM, I'm calling him GM for short, sorry, <laughs> in which the GM will explain to you like one hint in your first battle, and that's it. I kind of figured things out on my own with how to play, but if you've never played ATCG before, then the tutorial is 100% very nice. <laughs> but then later, as you do more fights and whatnot after Nexton, you'll get more hints on how to use the gems and the other things like that. I don't know really why they did it like that. I don't know why they just didn't do it in like one battle, but they did it like spread out between three. I guess not to just like info dump on you maybe. I don't know. I didn't really think it was like poorly done. It was just weird. <laughs> it was kind of nice to not be info dump done. Every time you enter combat, a tray is placed on top of the cards. This is so confusing. <laughs> Describing this game is a very weird experience. This tray is placed on top of the cards, and the cards I'm talking about are the map. So when you walk around, the cards will flip over and it'll reveal, oh, this is like a field, or this is like a mountain, and you can't climb on the mountain. Your little piece can't go there. Your map is cards. The characters are cards. The monsters are cards. Literally everything in this game is cards. I don't know if I've said that already. <laughs> the tray gets placed on your map of cards, and I, okay, before we get into combat, I will say, I do not know how the cards underneath the tray don't get moved around. If this was like a real game in which you played, where you, like there was like cards of the map and like you moved a piece of, that tray would 100% be moving those cards. This is some Square Enix sorcery. I. <laughs> so basically for a schlub rundown of how the combat goes, you have some cards that do just basic attacks. You have cards that do magic attacks that typically will need a gem to use. You have cards that can generate gems. Uh, you have a skip card and then underneath your main hand of like attacks and like or even like magic to heal. You have another deck of like items. So you have yourselves in there. You have, it's not called a Phoenix down. <laughs> it's called something else. I don't remember. It's kind of like a Phoenix down in which it will revive a knockdown character. You get to choose what cards you want to use, whether you want to just simply attack or if you would like to use the magic in which you have to use a gem for. Every turn generates one gem and you do have the ability or the card to generate one gem or however many gems depending on what character has it and if you use it and all that stuff but basically these gem abilities are amazing and use them when you can i i had a lot of fun um figuring out different strats of basically cheesing the demo <laughs> i was basically going through some fights where i it they wouldn't hit me because i would just destroy everything before they even had a chance <laughs> Does that use a gem? Is that what that means? Let's try it. Yeah, it does use a gem. And we get to roll dice! <gasps> Give me a- ah! <laughs> My horrible luck is showing. <laughs> and at the beginning of every fight, you always have two gems. So it's like an insta, like, bam, holy light, bam, fire. <laughs> like. <laughs> And kind of a little toxic, but it was a lot of fun. And some monsters will have weaknesses and resistance. On the cards of your characters and the monsters, there is a spot for your health 
strength and defense. So you get to see exactly how strong your characters are and the monsters are and how weak they are. Like I said, if you like TCGs, trading card games, if you are into, obviously, JRPGs, because wouldn't you believe this is a JRPG, <laughs> then you're definitely going to love this game and the combat with it. That was lucky. What do you mean that was lucky? I'm a Guad Gamer! After your first engagement, you enter the town of Nexton. You have to go around, talk to all the NPCs, and you're also able to enter the different shops there. There is an armor, an item shop, uh, an apothecary, an inn, and a game shop. And as you would guess about like the armor and the weaponsmith and like all that stuff, you know, traditional JRPG stuff. So you go in, you buy cards of the different things that are available, like your equipment or some weapons, and go on your merry way. Because it's a demo, might as well just go all out in the beginning. <laughs> it is quite easy to make money as you do combat as well. At least in the demo. I don't know if that's going to change. But what's really interesting is the game shop. So <laughs> as you would imagine, at the game shop, you play a card game. <laughs> and the card game is actually really fun. As you play the different modes, you unlock more modes. In the demo, I believe there's three modes total. If you play all three of them, whether you win or lose, you get an extra item that I cannot remember the name of, but it lets you get revived. <laughs> so good to probably hang on to. I could go into this like mini game a lot more, but if I do, I might spend way too much time like talking about it. I had a really fun time playing needless to say. Basically, it's very random. At least the, the first mode is. It, it's, I think it's, I believe it's called simple. It's very random, very RNG. It, it's, it has, it doesn't have much to do with skill. In the next two game modes that you unlock, there is a bit more critical thinking involved. So it is a mixture of RNG and timing what pairs you put together or yada, yada, yada. So not only should you be visiting the shops while you're in town, but you should also be talking to the NPCs. Some of the NPCs will give you information that will further your adventure to find this missing vial. After you interact with the NPCs, you then get to unlock their character story. In the menu, you're able to check out the character stories of different characters, and some of them are pretty normy. Some of them are like, okay, Yoko Taro wrote that one. <laughs> She's holding a knife. So after you leave the town, you are able to explore the wilderness. I don't know if that's what it's actually called, but I feel like it's safe to call it that. You walk around, and as you walk, the cards will flip over to show you whether it's a path, whether it's the forest, whether it's maybe even a chest. When I first played, I kind of, not accidentally, but I kind of like beelined it to where I needed to go. So I didn't do much exploring. I did get like a chest in my first playthrough of the demo, <laughs> and I think... That was about it. Other than maybe some enemy appearances. I didn't really do much, but upon my second playthrough of the demo, because I needed more, when I was wandering around, I was able to find more chests and I had more like really cute encounters. Not all of them were just fighting. There was a really cute instance with a goblin. And if you play the demo, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. If you play, just play the demo, it's really cute. And like, <laughs> it's just really wholesome. <laughs> Obviously, it's a JRPG. It's definitely worth it to explore as much as you can. When you explore the wilderness, you do have a chance of landing on a card in which you will have an enemy encounter and you're able to fight and level up your characters. I had a really good time leveling up and getting to know how to play the game, strengths and weaknesses and whatnot. Try lighting it on fire. <laughs> yes! I had, I had a small feeling he'd be weak to it. Great. After talking to the muscular sailor, which <laughs> <clears throat> you cannot stand on mountain. Oh, there he. The fellowship comes upon an anchored ship. Close by, a fisherman of exquisite physique hauls a net out of the water, his muscles rippling. Alex, I need you to see this. In giving him the item he requests, you're able to enter your first dungeon. The atmosphere in this dungeon really got me good. It was very dark. The noises and the ambiance, like, really... <laughs> there was something about it. It was kind of amazing. It really got me good. I was a bit startled and obviously very nervous as I had no idea, like, what kind of monsters were going to be here and how strong they were going to be. Um, I knew that I was on par for the recommended level of 7, but you still never know how challenging things can be. <laughs> 
you're able to explore the dungeon, unlock some chests, and do a boss fight. A boss fight is basically just, you know, a boss fight where the one monster will have a lot of health. <laughs> and they will, you know, sometimes also hit pretty hard. But you know, it was just your standard boss fight. So after kicking some skeleton booty, you are able to find the vial and return it to the queen. There's no more room to explore at this point. You go to the queen and give back the royal treasure when suddenly the title appears. But at that moment, a massive roar. Like never heard before. Oh yeah, there's dragons. <laughs> a dragon appears and is roaring outside. <laughs> Everyone seems really startled by the dragon, so obviously dragons must have a very dark story behind it. I'm very interested to get to know what these dragons have done to make these characters so terrified. I mean, in reality, dragons are supposed to be really scary, but still, but still, there must be, it, it's Yoko Taro, it must be very dark, so... <laughs> And that is the end of the demo. Upon completing the demo, you have unlocked the new ability to do multiplayer. I believe the multiplayer is local, but it's just to play the card games that you had played during the demo at the card shop. While the demo is about an hour long, I would say it's at least worth checking out. Maybe you just watched this video, you saw the clips, and you know it's something that's up your alley. Go ahead and pre-order, but I would just encourage you to get the experience yourself. It's only an hour long, there's no reason I don't think that's that much time. I don't know. Maybe you are busy. But I would just get the demo and try it out for yourself because I can only explain how amazing the atmosphere was and how amazing the music was so much. The demo is now available for you to try on Steam, Nintendo Switch, and PlayStation 4. After playing the demo, I realized that the trailer showed a different protagonist from what you play as in the demo. Here is our very good looking protagonist group and they do not look like anything <laughs> like the Ivory Order characters that we played as. If you also scroll up a little bit in the PlayStation blog, you can see that we actually get to encounter the Ivory Order. This makes me think that the Ivory Order is potentially doing something wrong or bad and they don't really realize it. I don't know. You sometimes just have to think a little outside of the box with these Yoko Taro games, but it's nice to know that the demo is a really nice introduction to the game without really showing too much. Voice of Cards, The Isle of the Dragon Wars will be releasing on October 28th of 2021, so just in a few weeks. The full retail price for Voice of Cards is $29.99, so it's not even a full, like, full $60 game. If you're interested in getting DLC, there is DLC. It seems to be purely cosmetic, but super, super lovely, at least in my humble opinion. If you are a big fan of Nier Replicant, then I highly recommend checking out the DLC in which you can make the main party turn into Nier, Kaine, and Emil, and just... <gasps> <laughs> it makes me so happy looking at it, so I probably will be getting the DLC. <laughs> There's also a collector's edition on the Japan Square Enix store, but unfortunately, it only looks like you can get the cards on the NA store. I don't know. Maybe people aren't wild like me and they get semi-interested in something. They just want to buy everything for it. Maybe people are more reasonable than that. <laughs> if you love Square Enix titles, if you love D&D or tabletop RPGs, if you love trading card games, then this game is probably going to be super up your alley like it is mine. The demo is free, so go check it out. I'll try to leave links below. I don't know. I'll leave any useful links that I can find. Thank you so much for watching this video on the Voice of Cards demo. I have never done a video like this. I normally do like highlight videos, but lately I've been quite, I don't want to say bored of doing highlight videos, but they're not quite, they're not like as satisfying to me as doing something like this where I'm able to like talk to the camera, talk to you guys, you know? So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below feeding the algorithm gods and just simply letting me know that you like this kind of format. I can pretty much apply this format to any game I play. So if you enjoy this over uh, just a simple reaction video, then please let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.